The Feast of the Transfiguration falls on August 6th each year. It's always on this date. This feast was added to our lectionary way back in the 1400s and has been carried forward ever since. We don't celebrate it like Christmas and Easter, but it is a major feast day. When August 6 falls on a Sunday, it becomes our focus, and thus the change to white from our green vestments. Now we may be familiar with this story, the Transfiguration story, because we hear the same story on the last Sunday in Epiphany, just before Lent starts. It's all about honor. The social science commentary by Melina and Rohrbaugh says honor was a fundamental value in the Middle East societies in Jesus' day and continues even now in many places. Honor is all about public reputation. Honor is not something one got for himself. It had to be given to the person by the community. Retaining honor for your family was how the family survived in good standing with their community. And this meant everything for them. Jesus had been healing and teaching in Galilee and knew that it was time for him to go to Jerusalem and die. His honor status among the people and his disciples had grown so high the authorities were worried. <coughs> the author excuse me. <coughs> the authorities were worried about a revolution. Jesus asked the disciples, Who do you say that I am? Peter responded, The Messiah, giving Jesus honor. Jesus then warned his followers that he was to be killed, and he told them that if he wanted to be his followers, they were to pick up their crosses every day and follow him. Jesus knew that his honor was tied into the cross. He then took James and John and Peter up on the mountain to pray, and the transfiguration occurred. The three disciples were asleep while Jesus was praying. They woke up and saw a vision of Jesus and two men, which tradition names as Moses and Elijah. Jesus' appearance was changed, shining like Moses when he saw the face of God. Peter, bless his heart, wanted to honor this vision and offered to build shrines for the three who had been glorified by God. But God said, this is my son, the chosen one, listen to him. This was the honor given by God to Jesus. It's all about honor. When they came down the mountain, Jesus healed a child who had a demon and Everyone was awestruck by the greatness of God. The people were giving Jesus honor. Jesus then told the disciples for the second time that he was to be delivered into the power of men and be killed. The disciples seemed to ignore that warning. Instead, they got into an argument about which one of them was the greatest. So Jesus took a little child and placed him on his lap and said, anyone who welcomes, honors this little child of my name, welcomes, honors me. And anyone who honors me, honors the one who sent me. The least among you all is the one who is the greatest. Jesus turned the honor thing on its head. Jesus said to honor him was not to put him on top of the honor pole, 
but to serve the little ones in his kingdom. Jesus welcomes, honors, gives glory to a little child who in their culture had no honor at all. Jesus gives honor to the demonic child and heals him. Jesus gives honor to the tax collectors and the Samaritans and the woman with the hemorrhage. Jesus gives honor to the least of these. Who are we to, to say, give honor to Jesus, if we don't follow what he says? If we don't pick up our crosses every day and follow him, follow his example, and love the least of these? Today is a feast day like Christmas and Easter. Maybe we don't celebrate it because we aren't getting gifts or chocolate eggs. But if we listen to God, maybe we will, we will get something greater. Maybe we can get a vision of the love of God in Christ. A vision where we put others first, especially the little ones. Maybe we can get a vision that will change our lives. Amen.